Hello everyone, my name is Stephanie and I'm the event coordinator for Boulder Bookstore and I just want to thank you all so much for joining us tonight. It is with your support and your book purchases that we can keep putting on uh, cool events like this even during such strange times as we find ourselves in right now. So thank you all so much for your support. Let's get on to some bios. So Zigar Kongtru Rinpoche grew up in a monastic environment and received extensive training in all aspects of Buddhist doctrine. In 1989, he moved to the United States with his family, and in 1990, he began a five-year tenure as a professor of Buddhist philosophy at Naropa University. He also founded Mangala Sri Bhuti, his own teaching organization during this period. He has established a mountain retreat center in southern Colorado. Rinpoche travels throughout the world teaching. And in conversation with him tonight is Sasha Dorje Meyerowitz, who has been a student of Kongtru Rinpoche since 1997. He has had the honor of serving on the administration of Mangala Sri Bhuti since 2000, most recently as executive vice president. He is the chief operating officer of Narrative Inc., a storytelling company. He lives in New York City with his wife and son and has a home in Crestone, Colorado. All right, with all of that, I'll turn things over to Sasha and the Kongtru Rinpoche. Good evening, Rimche. Welcome. Good evening, Sasha. Good evening, everybody. Rimche, I'm so happy to be speaking about Peaceful Heart with you again. I so enjoyed our last conversation and um, I've been reading the book, of course, to prepare and amazed at how practical the advice is and how uh, every line seems to be relevant. And it struck me um, that patience practice seems to be cut right to the core of our existence and seems to be relevant in all situations and is also closely tied to peace. And I was wondering why, why is it, why does it cut so close to the core of this notion of patience? Thank you, Sakya. That's a, a good question. And uh, I think we have our brain and heart and uh, mind is disturbed. Uh, both of those two are disturbed. And um, I guess when we, um, uh, for example, uh, uh, harbor a grudge, uh, we are thinking about the event that took place, what perhaps may have hurt us, and, uh, and then thinking about how maybe perhaps we could uh, uh, have a, some kind of an, uh, retaliation uh, and that's kind of the brain work uh, in the Tibetan Buddhism or in the Buddhism, uh, we call it, it's the work of uh, sixth, uh, sixth consciousness, you know. But meanwhile, then you are having a, a lot of emotions uh, that you are feeling. And uh, that would be, I think, uh, in the kind of a general term, it would be a disturbance a heart or a disturbance stirs in the heart. And uh, in the Buddhism, it's the mental feelings. Mm -hmm. So those two are very closely connected. You know, outside of that, then maybe we have a, a sensual experiences and, uh, and the sensual experiences uh, most probably mm, could be in a very mm, pleasant uh, conditions to experience pleasant, but when we are harboring a, a grudge and when we are feeling quite uh, uh, angry inside, most probably we don't notice anything uh, where we are. We could be in, uh, you know, uh, Palm Beach, California, or Hawaii, or uh, mm, I don't know, Phuket, or uh, any of those great uh, results, uh, but in the mind, you know, at that time, uh, you're going to be very much uh, uh, not feeling quite uh, uh, in a uh, state of uh, ease and peace. So, over the <clears throat> uh, two uh, sensual experiences versus the mental uh, experiences. Uh, mental experiences uh, overshadows the sensual experiences. And uh, so therefore, I think to have a, a somewhat of an, uh, uh, ways to work with one's mind, uh, those things can occur, those things occur uh, 
uh, almost uh, very kind of um, naturally depending on whether you are working with your mind or whether you are working with your feelings or not. Uh, as to occur, most probably it's very uh, habitual and natural for all of us. But uh, to be able to work with one's own mind and thus to kind of uh, change the perspective and then to put one's uh, um, heart at ease and uh, uh, also find a peace in one's heart is going to be very important uh, for, uh, for all of us as a human being. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know how the animals do, uh, whether they would have an uh, ability to kind of uh, think through uh, and then put their uh, uh, mental uh, uh, agitations or mental uh, disturbance uh, at ease. But we, as a human being, certainly have that ability. So if we don't use that, um, we're going to be really uh, losing much of our, uh, our ability and also a state of uh, peace and uh, enjoyment of uh, our sort of uh, human life as well as also the conditions that we are very blessed with. So I think in that way, uh, it really uh, strikes a core for us to be able to, uh, you know, work through with our own kind of a, uh, patience practice to bring our mind in a perspective and the heart in a, a state of ease. Rimche, do we also apply patience? Even when we're having, you know, positive experiences or kind of excitement, is it is it relevant in any case that comes to mind, at some level? Well, I think uh, you know, <clears throat> uh, patient's practice is mainly, you know, uh, 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 as in a sort of uh, practice to generally appreciate and generally to try to kind of have in one's life, but particularly when you are. Uh, challenged with the some provocations or some your own kind of a misunderstanding or uh, thoughts uh, that sort of goes in hair wire, uh, thinking negatively and uh, getting quite agitated. You know, <clears throat> uh, mostly it occurs uh, with a uh, two ways, um, which is uh, you know we want uh, something and we want something to happen. And then uh, it's not happening, and it's uh, you know not happening, and um, uh, we're not getting what we want, and uh, so uh, in those situations, then uh, when we find there is a, a obstacle, an obstacle maker, you know, uh, particularly another individual or another uh, being, then we get you know. Uh, we get angry. I mean, there could be obstacles uh, in what we want and what we want things to happen. But if it's inanimate, we don't get angry at the an inanimate things. Um, but if it's another uh, individual, uh, another being, then we get angry, you know. Hmm. So that's a one way uh, we get angry. And then another way we get angry is we want something not to happen. And... Uh, and uh, <clears throat> uh, and it's happening, you know, and we think uh, somebody is bringing this uh, onto us. Um, a person or another being is uh, bringing this onto us, and then in that time, then we get uh, you know uh, agitated or we get uh, angry, and then we uh, you know try to sort of. Uh, uh, the whole kind of in a, um, uh, in a unconscious level, uh, anger works as in a sort of a way to overcome uh, the obstacles, you know, uh, eliminate the obstacles. But it doesn't work that way. And that's uh, the kind of the tragedy of the anger. Just to step back now, in the introduction, you connect this book to your previous book, Training in Tenderness, which is a kind of guide for us to discover a deeper level of warmth towards others. And then in the introduction to this, you say how patience 
actually is a protector for that rather than we just randomly practice patients without perspective about why we are in relation to that heart. And I just wondered if you could draw that connection again, because I thought that was very clarifying as someone who grew up you know, in the West with this notion of it's good to be patient, but I hadn't yet connected it in the way that you do in the intro. Well, I think <clears throat> there's a many levels. Uh, we could maybe uh, talk about that. Uh, but in a fundamental level, I think if we are to uh, talk about it, you know, uh, there's no really, uh, uh, sometimes in many of the uh, families, there's no uh, lack of a love. There's a lot of love, you know, between uh, <clears throat> uh, spouses or between parents and uh, children and between um, uh, siblings uh, and relatives. There's a lot of love. There's a lot of uh, sense of bond and uh, connection and uh, love, you know, and when all is good. You feel the warmth from uh, your side and you feel the warmth from the other side. And there's a tremendous sense of uh, pleasure and uh, uh, bliss in that kind of a sense of feeling the kind of uh, uh, love and the warmth of the love and the affection from each other, you know. Uh, but then most of the time also, <clears throat> alone with that, uh, there's a lot of... Uh, <clears throat> Frictions and uh, you know just naturally uh, when a lot of uh, cups and plates are on one table, it makes a, 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 a lot of uh, noise, uh, and like that, there's a you know a lot of frictions that comes up uh, accidentally, and because of the lack of the patience, then it can turn into a sort of a really a, a very painful experience to be. Uh, in the same space or in the same uh, 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 place uh, in the events like, uh, you know, uh, Christmas or, or Thanksgiving or birthdays and things like that. So uh, if you have a patience, you know, in general, in your life as to cherish and as to practice, and as well as especially if you really have a patience, when uh, you are needed to uh, be patient, then you could avoid all those painful experiences and just go with that uh, connection and go with that uh, uh, love and uh, feel that kind of a sense of uh, deep uh, warmth and uh, uh, bliss and happiness uh, to be in the same uh, place. So I always consider, you know, from the kind of higher level <clears throat> of a speaking, Bodhicitta is the greatest, or the universal love is the greatest thing that uh, you know Buddhism offers, and not only just Buddhism, but all major traditions of the religion offers uh, uh, that as the main thing, essence of uh, religion. And um, so, in order to kind of like uh, promote that and also preserve that and protect that, you need a patience as well, you know. And, uh, and the patience here, maybe in the beginning, it might come as in a sort of uh, green and bare uh, uh, in the situation, what's happening, and then just sort of like a, stay like a, a piece of uh, log. Uh, but in reality, it's changing your perspective, you know. Changing your perspective, what's happening to you uh, seemingly are negative, not as a, not so much of a negative, but even could be a positive. And then with that thought process, maybe perhaps you could also communicate uh, to your heart to sort of not be reactive and then uh, have a sense of appreciation. So in that way, it can turn around. Renji, that's such, a, such an interesting thing to take that perspective that you know the aggression you're being challenged with or the aggression inside you may be facing and reaction is actually good for you and the way that you're speaking. Could you just say a little bit more? Because I think that's it's a radically different way of looking at those things that irritate us. Yeah, but I think uh, <clears throat> uh, in a uh, sense, you know, um, uh, everyone knows, uh, you know, we could all use more patience. And especially those who actually suffer with a, a lack of patience and a lack of uh, tolerance and uh, uh, kind of in a... a very agitated state of mind and uh, uh, bursting out into an anger, these people, you know, 
most of the time are very intelligent. Uh, and uh, they know that, you know, uh, they can use more patients in their life. And it would really overall, as an uh, uh, improvement in their life, that would be a great, uh, great benefit for them, you know. Uh, so <clears throat> uh, what happens is, even if you know that, uh, sometimes, you know, in the dynamic, you get lost and in the sort of uh, frictions. You don't know how to sort of like a, uh, have a sense of a uh, control or a sense of uh, being able to step back and then uh, 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 withdraw or just, uh, you know, uh, disengage. Uh, that's the main kind of a weakness that, you know, uh, a lot of the times people suffer from. And uh, <clears throat> so... For that to happen, you know, for that to happen, you need a uh, patient's practice in a sort of a, uh, your general life. As a Shanti Deva in the uh, uh, patient's chapter speaks, you know, uh, other times when you are feeling agitated, not necessarily uh, there isn't a person or you are feeling agitated, you are feeling agitated because the air condition is not working or it's hot or you are feeling, uh, you know, agitated because, <clears throat> you know, uh, somehow, you know, uh, 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 your car is not, you know, uh, uh, driving uh, well uh, and, uh, you know, uh, uh, many times, you know, uh, and those times are very, very uh, a good uh, starting point to sort of uh, uh, notice how you're getting agitated uh, and how you are feeling kind of a little bit impatient inside. And then know that you need to turn this all uh, around and you, you know, uh, uh, you have to, you know, kind of speak to yourself, <clears throat> as again in the uh, patient's chapter, it speaks very clearly. If it is a remediable, why to get uh, this way? Uh, and just see what you could do to remedy the situation. And if it's a not remediable, what's the point of uh, getting this way and losing yourself to the agitations and getting all worked up? So this, you know, uh, this line of thinking has to be applied in a uh, small, small, small ways to improve that kind of a sensation to be, uh, first of all, not occur you know, as much as before. And even when it occurs, it's a shorter of an uh, lived. And then, uh, you know, uh, you could actually turn it around to sort of calm those three experiences. If you could manage, you know, uh, in life in general, uh, then when actually uh, uh, something bigger happens, you would have that disposition, you would have that familiarity, you would have that kind of in a sense of an, uh, knowing how to kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, disengage, you know, uh, from that uh, uh, rut, uh, generally that, you know, uh, you have a train uh, going down uh, uh, with no control. Well, so in so each day we if we start the day with a kind of intention to practice patience, then a lot of it is going to be familiarizing, as you're saying, and being honest about that kind of small irritation level, right? So then, if something really challenging comes, we're sort of already in the groove of being self-aware about what could trigger a bigger reaction. Yes. That's exactly. And then also, you know, like uh, uh, just uh, keeping a, a, a awareness how something that seemingly is a negative in the beginning uh, with workings with your own mind and with your own patient's practice, uh, sort of trying to kind of uh, change the perspective of that, uh, being a negative to an, a positive thing, how you could really feel the positive and have the appreciation for the uh, occurrence of such things. This could be all personal, you know, not in the books, or it could be just really personal experiences. And that kind of the personal experiences encourages you and gives you the strength and motivates you to go deeper and deeper. It kind of builds momentum. 
in a positive it way. It builds a momentum. It also sort of like it gives you the certitude in how you could work with your mind. You know, not somebody tells you how you could work with your mind, but how you know you could work with your mind and turn things around. And it's all, you know, very uh, agile and flexible in us, uh, some ways when you start to work with your mind. Mm -hmm. I, I, there's some point on the, of the page here where you talk about how we build a sort of self-esteem through doing, I think, exactly what you're saying. And then that self-esteem kind of rises us out of other sort of negative or confused states of mind and inspires us to pursue doing this. I, that really struck me that that's an inner way of generating self-esteem. That's kind of- Well, a, uh, there is a, uh, always uh, two different kinds of uh, uh, bliss and two different kinds of pleasure. There's a two different kinds of uh, self-esteem, you know, and uh, <clears throat> one is going to be seemingly just in the uh, uh, first glance, both are going to look uh, similar and it's going to feel kind of a similar, but um, <clears throat> one is going to be more uh, to kind of uh, 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 indulging your ego, you know, indulging your kind of habitual uh, ways of uh, 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 satisfying your ego. Another is a more uh, uh, step back from that and then giving a, uh, more weight to your uh, sensible uh, uh, wisdom and or sensible, uh, therefore, the wisdom being the self, you know. Um, so <clears throat> the first kind is going to be very habitual. It's going to be like, a, as the Chandrakirti has stated, it's going to be like a bucket uh, in the well going down will take no any kind of an effort. It will just go down. Uh, but the second kind is going to be a little bit more uh, difficult in the beginning to uh, practice or to have a, uh, a strength of that uh, right away. But as you get the strength of that, uh, that kind of an, uh, uh, bliss or the pleasure uh, or the uh, self-esteem, which is going to be like, a, you know, you set in a motivation and then you are able to follow through to meet that motivation uh, so that the intention and action are able to meet in the end. That kind of, in a, you know, <clears throat> uh, 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 effortful, uh, constructive work is always going to be giving a lot more sense of confidence, you know. Uh, the first one, uh, might just rob your confidence. Uh, even in the moment, it might feel a little bit good. Uh, like, a, for example, in the moment, you know, uh, of an, a big, heated, uh, uh, angry, uh, uh, back and forth, uh, you know, kind of an argument, you might feel very sort of a, a passionate about winning the argument, you know, winning the argument and using all your reasoning to sort of uh, win the uh, argument, you know. But in the end, uh, what's the point? If, you know, you lose uh, peace uh, and harmony and uh, not only, you know, you lose, you uh, have really caused a lot of uh, suffering uh, to each other in a, a kind of a exchange of harsh words. And if there are children there, they're seeing that and they're kind of feeling quite terrified and, you know, totally sort of bewildered what's going on with the parents, you know. Uh, you know, so it's sort of really what Buddha has said, his uh, uh, anger uh, is a somewhat like a, a you know, a, 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 a situation of a death, you know. Death meaning death to our awareness in that way, you know, death to our mindfulness. You know, and when we indulge in that quite often, we often feel quite uh, uh, unsure of ourselves and insecure. And I was wondering if there's ever, you know, sometimes we react, you may snap at someone, maybe less in a less close situation. I'm thinking a little bit of in New York, sometimes in dealings, you have to sort of be a little bit more forceful I'm finding to just get stuff done. And it feels very different than if you're kind of brewing with a lot of negative attitudes so, towards someone and then you kind of speak harshly from that place. So is there, is that, is there really a difference? You know, is, it a, is there any 
purpose sometimes in reacting forcefully that seems aggressive, but is just more, or is, is your patience just totally failing you in those moments? You know, when we were growing up in India, when we were young, you know, uh, uh, we used to go to see movies, you know, in the movie theaters. And uh, <clears throat> when it's a popular movie, there's like a, a hundred people on the uh, uh, ticket counter. Uh, and everybody's trying to get closer to the ticket counter and buy the tickets, you know. And uh, mm, um, so that's also kind of a part of life and uh, enjoyment, too. Mm. And um, so, you know, in that kind of a situation, of course, you know, being a patient and just kind of like uh, sitting in the line is not going to work, right? So you have to kind of like join in the uh, 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 crowd and just try your best. But of course, you know, uh, most of the time nobody is shouting at each other, nobody is, you know, um, hitting each other, nobody is, you know, uh, you know uh, being angry, but just it's a kind of the whole game of uh, getting there first and getting your tickets and then walking out, feeling quite proud, right? And so I, I think there is a room and there is a place uh, uh, for something like that too. You know, as I think that's required a lot in New York, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and then when I went to Delhi, you know, uh, you know, as I grew up a little bit older, you know, we went to one of those uh, nice movie theaters to see a movie. And everybody is, you know, uh, online, you know. Uh, and everybody, you know, is very civilized. And I thought that's quite boring in a way. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I mean, it was kind of in a... Uh, uh, very shocking uh, from where I came from, you know, but it was also quite boring, you know, to just wait for hours to get uh, your tickets out. You know, in this other way, you know, you either get the ticket or ticket is going to be sold and then you just have to leave, you know. You don't wait for so long. So I guess there is a place, there is a place, there is a place for everything, you know. But I think, so the patient is really much to do with that kind of like a mental agitation and the emotional surge of this kind of a, a false uh, attitude of power and a sort of a trying to kind of you know, do some uh, uh, vanquishing of others who you see is, as a threat, you know, and sort of a, comes to you as an... Uh, 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 opposed to what you wish. Uh. Yes, Ramji, the vanquishing is such a good description of that kind of darker feeling inside of just wanting to conquer what yeah. you to push away. Such an idea. Yeah. Um, yeah. I know, Ramji, they wanted us to open up to some questions, but I wanted to just bring up one more term. Years ago, as I mentioned last time, you used the word simmering, this practice of simmering as a way of kind of coming through the agitation. I thought that's such a great analogy and it's a very concrete um, you know practice to undertake so I just wonder mm -hmm. if you could say a little bit about that because it's very yes I think very, that's a you know, that's very very helpful because some of our you know our storylines um, and uh, some of our justifications to get angry <clears throat> and some of our uh, excuses you know uh, to sort of not be patient is going to be very tenacious you know so while they are very tenacious, you have to simmer in that experience what sort of like those uh, uh, storylines or the uh, justifications or the uh, excuses to not uh, uh, be patient sort of uh, runs uh, in your mind and uh, it ev evokes the uh, the anger or it evokes the grudge or it evokes the kind of a sensation of that feeling of burning inside. You know, you know that there's that phase and you're going through that phase. So it's good to kind of a simmer and then, you know, know that the power of a simmering in those will slowly wear those out and then you could, you know, kind of a put your head in the right uh, place and uh, line up with a good uh, 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 patient's practice and a good uh, uh, um, uh, 
uh, particular ways of uh, changing your thought patterns or attitudes. You know, until that point, if you are sometimes, you know, too quick to kind of you know, apply to yourself uh, all of the remedies, you know, it's kind of a patch that you are trying to put and it's going to fall out. And it's, you're putting a patch and it falls out and it, it becomes a sort of almost uh, pointless, you know, like a bandage that you put on, you know, and it's falling off and it's falling off and then you get, you know, even further more frustrated. I was wondering about that, Imj, it's such a good point, how you, you can just sort of throw the practice or the concept of the practice at your experience, but then it doesn't really, yeah. you don't go through much of a process with it, and then you end up... Yeah, but the uh, thing is, like, you know, uh, thing is, with the more patience, you know, though I'm not claiming at all, I'm a, a very patient person, uh, or I've uh, uh, com uh, perfected the patient's practice or anything like that, but it gets easier and easier, you know. You don't have to simmer too long. You know, once you have the certitude, certitude is the most important, right? Once you get a deeper level of a certitude, why you need to do patience, how that patience practice offers you a lot of a peace and strength and also a, 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 a lot of a other a amazing, amazing kind of a, uh, attributes to enjoy in your life, you know, then you don't have to simmer too long. You know, the sacrifice, uh, what your mm, uh, storyline or what your excuses or what your um, mm, alibi to get angry goes away pretty fast. Yeah, the alibi, I guess one of the alibis is that whole notion of we being a doormat or we being taken advantage of is... Yes. Right, that's one of those, it sort of seduces you to not get through the simmering. Well, that all comes from the self, right? Self feeling weak, right? Mm. You know, and there's the misunderstanding of patient's practice sort of like uh, is uh, uh, helping that uh, self getting weaker. But in reality, you know, uh, that's not the case at all, you know. Whatever you need to do, uh, you can still do while you are a patient. You know, if you need to communicate, if you need to sort out, if you need to make a good deals, if uh, if you need to kind of like overcome, you know, a certain obstacles, you could do all of those. Patient practice is not uh, uh, opposed to any of those. You know, patient's practice is just working with your mind and emotions to be in a state of calm and peace, and then work from there, work from that kind of in a ground to have a more sort of a, a clear thinking and a clear uh, wisdom and a clear uh, a formulated uh, skillful means to approach and uh, uh, meet the intentions and actions meet. And of course, sometimes in there, you know, uh, you have to always, you know, have a, some kind of like, a, you know, conscientious to not sort of uh, indulge the uh, indulge the self completely, of course, otherwise, you know, you would not even be a, a, a person with, a, 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 what do you call, a, a reasons to or, or practice something like a patience, you know, it would be like, a, you know, a, a loan, what do you call, a loan cuff, a, a, Lone wolf and cough, kind of, in a, you know, like a assassin, you know, being kind of very still, cool, patient. That's a great image, Rumche. Um, Rumche, there is a there's a question coming through. Um, oh, the question they're asking Rumche, how much did the pandemic affect your writing of this book? Oh, my writing of this pandemic. Um, well, I think you know, pandemic. Uh, uh, was much a uh, little bit later, you know, than when we wrote this, but it kind of like worked out very well that, uh, you know, people can read this in the time of a pandemic, and uh, I think a lot of people are suffering uh, with the various different ways, uh, especially being locked down and being inside, and then also a lot of, you know, uh, kind of a cabin fever type of an uh, uh, inpatients coming up. But I wanted to just follow that last question a little bit more, Mche. So, you know, some kind of negative reaction comes up in my mind, but it's about something I have to 
communicate or do. And I'm giving some time to simmer, but it's not quite resolved. But you, ha mm -hmm. I have to relate. So I, I'm still trying to learn how do you kind of carry through with that patience and not react too much from there, but also do the relating you have to do. Is that, is that just something that you kind of get better at over time or? Well, I think also, uh, um, you know, with the patient's practice, uh, also one thing that is kind of a uh, requirement is that you have to have a positive thinking, that things are gonna be better. You know, if you have a negative thinking, nothing is gonna get better, then to be patient is going to be somewhat difficult. But along with the patient's practice that you have to have, you know, positive thinking that things are gonna get better, you know, and things do get better with the patient's practice, you know, and things do get better with the patient's practice in a sense that, you know, your own strength grows much. I mean, if we are talking about just green and bare, you know, kind of in the patients, maybe things might not get better. But if you're working actively with your own insight to change kind of like, you know, your perspective and your uh, way of seeing things and how you are reacting and how you are uh, also, you know, uh, 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 severing the experience, you know, to be from negative to positive, you know, uh, then it's going to be different. It's a very different from what normal we know of patients as in, a, you know, uh, green and bare, you know. Well, yeah, questions coming in. Um, what if anger and reactivity is the result of lots of childhood trauma and conditioning? At times, it seems impossible for me to overcome it through those practices. The mind reacts faster than I can apply the antidote. The reactivity feels like it's deeply ingrained in my personality. How do we work with that? Mm. Nothing is completely ingrained in the personality of anyone. You know, that is, uh, I think, it's something that the Buddha's uh, teachings and uh, something that, uh, you know, Buddhist teachings are very, very helpful, you know. Uh, for example, you know, sky is not going to be, however, clouded and uh, uh, there's a lot of uh, dust and there's a lot of uh, <clears throat> obscuration. Sky, by nature, uh, is untenable, uh, unte uh, um, untaintable. untaintable, untaintable, right? Like that a uh, person's true nature is never going to be uh, 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 tentable by, with the obscurations and with the uh, uh, emotions and with the, you know, different kind of uh, uh, um, any of uh, what we so-called uh, uh, flaws of habits, you know. Uh, however, you know, however that is the case, uh, to sort of uh, recognize that is going to be difficult. And uh, I think uh, because we live in a relative world and we're talking this in the absolute nature, you know. Uh, uh, but that helps also to kind of uh, build your confidence, uh, uh, start your confidence from there, even if it's conceptual, you know. So, uh, to answer the question here, I think uh, <clears throat> what happens is when we have had a lot of uh, trauma and when we had a lot of uh, uh, kind of uh, um, uh, trauma stored in our brains and as well as in our physical body and in our memories, you know, it gets kind of a locked down, you know. And uh, <clears throat> so when that happens, you know, unconsciously sometimes, you know, uh, things come up like a long time ago. Uh, when Elizabeth and we were living in uh, Los Angeles, uh, we were driving um, from uh, uh, her grandmother's. Mm, her grandmother's um, uh, back to LA, and then we got in an accident. You know, somebody uh, hit us in the left side uh, of the uh, car and the car was all total. We were all three very miraculously uh, okay, but the car was completely total. So for a whole year or two, whenever a car comes from the left side, I always cringe, you know. I'm not mentally thinking, right? 
mentally thinking that car is going ahead, uh, you know. But when the car is coming, because of that, whatever is being locked down in the body, in the brain, I'm always, you know, a little bit apprehensive or I'm always clenching, uh, clenching on the seat. So like that, I think there is that kind of a trauma. The way to kind of uh, release the trauma, of course, there's the uh, psychological uh, uh, therapy uh, that helps to uh, release the trauma. But the way, I think, in the, in the Buddhist teachings uh, that this emphasizes is, you know, to kind of uh, really go into your uh, heart, you know, and the mind to... Uh, in terms of uh, you know uh, uh, painful memories and uh, trauma, to kind of uh, uh, just see how much you could slowly and gradually, not at once, because what once it might be too extreme, to you know forgive, you know, and forgive with the, like in the patient's book as it is stated how, you know, uh, we are all dependently, you know, originated and uh, how we all are kind of an, uh, um, uh, we think, you know, when somebody is hitting you with the stick, why to get angry at the stick? Stick is, though, hurting you directly, it is the person who's wielding the stick is hurting you, not the stick is hurting you. So we get the, uh, we get angry at the uh, person who's wielding the stick, right? Wielding is that right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, but the person in the wielding, uh, like the stick, is not really uh, in a, a, a autonomous uh, and deliberate uh, position person in the stick is wielded by the emotions, you know, and uh, various, you know, kind of disturb, uh, destructive emotions, you know, uh, like a almost insane, you know. Um, uh, so in that kind of, in a, you know, uh, analysis, uh, you know, who is really uh, uh, has that kind of a complete control and liberty and complete sort of uh, uh, autonomous power to uh, do anything wrong, you know. And then there's the equation of the karma, there's the equation of, you know, what role you were playing in there too, and all of those kind of... Uh, now somebody, if wants to really p uh, uh, practice patience, and in this case, in order to do patients practice, one first has to go through this kind of like analysis to overcome one's own trauma with their forgiveness, and one wants to forgive. You know, if one is not ready to forgive, it might take some more time, you know. Um, <clears throat> but if one is ready to forgive, those kind of analysis can kind of slowly, slowly uh, uh, clean out the residue of that trauma, you know. And then, you know, with a sense of a uh, uh, deeper kind of a uh, uh, universal love or uh, love that is impartial to, uh, you know, uh, uh, being me and mine, you know, uh, related, just everyone wishes to be happy and everyone longs to be free from uh, suffering. And this person also is the same and therefore, you know, uh, despite of all what they are doing or what they have done, you know, they are still a uh, living being and uh, as any living being, you know, um, uh, deserves to be happy as they wish to be happy and longs to be uh, free, deserves to be also uh, uh, free from suffering. So in those kind of a line of a bodhicitta thinking, if you could cultivate that warmth, you know, that helps tremendously to overcome the all of the uh, all of the kind of uh, uh, all of the uh, uh, traumas. You know, I think if I'm to uh, not um, assume, I think this is most probably how His Holiness Dalai Lama has overcome a lot of his you know trauma of losing the country and 
all what his country a man and woman has gone through I know so many of the other great masters of the Tibetan and so as also of all of the great saints of the past in the Buddhist tradition and other traditions most probably it's not like they haven't gone through a different uh, difficult uh, uh, experiences and they have not had also uh, traumas but if they have healed the trauma most probably this is how they have healed the trauma by forgiveness and restoring in their heart the universal love well just to, just for one more second Ramchi. so that's just another in the book those that reasoning is another large feature of the book not just looking inside at our reactivity but also examining how from the outside for example someone is not in control or the, yeah. their, it, uh, the situations arise from causes, many, many causes and conditions. So, oh, go ahead, sorry. Well, there's a, there's a two ways of thinking. One in supportive of your intention, which is to uh, add strength to uh, uh, practice patients and uh, pro-patients practice. One is going to be a, a line of thinking that is going to be uh, uh, against that and uh, also pro, uh, 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 pro anger or pro uh, harboring grudge and or just not ready to you know kind of uh, uh, fully uh, uh, let it go and uh, and also not even acknowledge how painful it is so all this, you know, what we find in the patient's book and what the teachers tell us is always going to be the pro, you know. But you have to be there to go with that. You have to be ready to go with that, you know. If you are not ready to go with that, you cannot be forced, right? But if you are ready there to go with that, then I think, you know, all of those can work, you know. And what makes us ready personally is to see the pain that we are causing ourselves with the anger and the grudge and, uh, you know, and not being able to overcome uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the events that took place, which sort of still is repeatedly uh, aftermath uh, causing us a lot of pain. So therefore, you know, as in the Shantideva's uh, book, Bodhisattva uh, Sayavatar, it says sometimes the pain could be, you know, usually we always reject impulsively, and unconditional, any pain we experience, we reject. You know, that's a very kind of a normal way how we behave. But if you, if you uh, sometimes, you know, uh, um, uh, step back from the normal reactions and, you know, think clear, sometimes pain can be, you know, uh, uh, very helpful, you know, for us to kind of get clear uh, where the pain is coming from, and what's causing us the pain, and then get to kind of a deeper levels of ourselves to work uh, uh, with the uh, cause of the pain, so that, you know, pain doesn't then, in that way, becomes uh, sort of a <clears throat> uh, uh, daily experiences of ours. You know, so therefore, in the Four Noble Truths, the Buddha said, you know, uh, monks realize life is pain if there's no remedy that could be applied and it could be overturned saying monks realize life is pain would be a, such a kind of a depressing uh, and very very kind of a, a hopeless since that is not the case you know since there is a way to turn over the pain therefore to realize the pain in the first place was very, very, you know, uh, important and, and it leads to the second uh, how you could uh, overturn the pain, which is to trace the pain with the, uh, uh, its immediate cause and then overcome the cause. Thank you, Rimuchi. So a, a, maybe a final question from a, a guest, Rimuchi. I experience a lot of anger at the mob storming our capital. I thought of vengeance. How can I feel compassion for people who are causing so much destruction? I know they have Buddha nature. Yes. Well, I think, you know, what they have done, I think it really is a very, very uh, sad uh, in our country. 
and it is very, very, you know, wrong, and it is truly, you know, not a, a patriot thing. Uh, and, uh, but however, there's a lot of confusions, you know, and we have all experiences in different times, a lot of confusions, you know, and uh, so I hope that, you know, uh, the confusions which, which uh, erupts in this kind of an, uh, uh, extreme behavior uh, is, uh, I hope, in time, is going to be clarified and it's going to be purified. And in time, I think there is going to be a lot more of an, a sense of an, uh, peace and harmony. And we can all, you know, in this sense, you know, really for the, for the future and for the immediate uh, near uh, future, a much of a uh, peace and a prayer for the peace uh, in the world in general and particularly in our own country. And this is where I'm actually focusing my life right now uh, a lot, uh, just praying for some kind of a clarity and uh, uh, peace and, uh, and uh, some kind of harmony and healing. So positive thinking, positive emotions, you know, naturally, even if you're not using it as a remedy for the negative, it can serve as a remedy. Because in the mind stream, two thoughts cannot occur at one time. Two emotions cannot occur in one mind stream. So if you are emphasizing on the positive thinking and uh, positive uh, emotions, you know, uh, you know, such as like, you know, uh, healing and harmony and uh, praying for peace and praying for uh, confusions to be resolved and clarity, clarity that suits all, you know, uh, because we all want happiness. We all want uh, uh, freedom from uh, suffering. In that, you know, uh, there's no really uh, uh, any divisions and gap, you know. <clears throat> so hopefully something more uh, uh, obvious how that could be achieved, you know. Uh, for example, like uh, how we could achieve to get back into some kind of normalcy of our life is that most probably everyone is going to enjoy, you know. So I hope that in this way some more clarity can come and then in that way, you know, more peace can come as well. And that's what I'm praying. Thank you, Rinpoche. I think that's a great note to end on i believe are we we're at our time is that right stephanie yeah we're we're right at six o'clock pretty much so we're just at the end here so uh remember Shea, thank you so much for joining us and for sharing this beautiful book with us um, thank you very much stephanie and thank you all uh, for joining uh, uh us here and thank you boulder bookstore for hosting us and uh I hope that uh, uh, this is helpful and uh, in uh, 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 um, regardless uh, of, uh, you know, whether you get to uh, uh, um, uh, purchase this book or not, I hope that, you know, may patience uh, uh, is your uh, uh, core value and uh, increase uh, that. Uh, patience, what you value in your heart, uh, in your life, and may that also spread in the world, uh, and may there will be a lot more uh, uh, patience and uh, peace uh, throughout the uh, 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 world, and uh, particularly right now here. Wonderful sentiments. Thank you so much.